This is plastic trash and that is tofu. Believe it or not, this is how tofu is made in East Java, Indonesia. Every day, millions of people eat it. Without knowing, it might be toxic. That was until filmmaker Andrew Fraser exposed the practice in a viral documentary. But there was something that really got my attention. From everything that I've found, no one's ever really tested the tofu itself. So I thought, what if I went there? What if I tested the tofu? And then show the results to Andrew. Because if this stuff is really poisoning people, they deserve to know. So that's exactly what I did. But there was a problem. I don't speak the language. I had no idea where to go. And locals were already on high alert. This turned out to be a challenging investigation. Recently, this area has been hotspot in newspaper. So is the tofu safe to eat? Or are people slowly getting poisoned? So my plan for this video is to fly to Surabaya, then find the toxic tofu factory, buy a piece, and then bring a potentially toxic tofu piece to the lab. After that, I will contact Andrew and hopefully hop on a call with him to share the results. At this point, I still have no idea where I should go. I think I'm just going to fly out and then kind of figure it out as I go. That's the plan. And um, yeah, I guess uh, now I just have to wait for my flight. So uh, wish me luck. So I was able to check into my room. In the meantime, I have made some progress. Apparently, the uh, tofu factories are findable on Google. But of course, since we're in Indonesia, they're not called tofu factories, but they're called the Indonesian words, which I forgot. Oh yeah, pabrik tahu. If you look for those, there are tens and tens of them on the on the map. So I think it is a good idea to rent a, a motorbike to explore some of those factories tomorrow. Yeah, try to go to bed early because we have a lot of uh, exploring to do tomorrow. As I was making my way towards the tofu factories, I was excited, but also very nervous. What if they have seen the documentary? What if I'm not allowed inside? And what if I flew all the way out here for nothing? I guess there was only one way to find out. If only I'd known what would happen next. So I just arrived at the village. I wasn't sure if I was in the right spot, but then I saw these huge plumes up ahead. And these gentlemen here want to film a live TikTok with me to promote this real estate. So going on a little side quest and then, uh, yeah, we'll go uh, to buy the tofu. I had to be careful because I had no idea if people had seen Andrew's documentary. So to get my way in, I pretended to be a naive tourist. And, wh and what are they making over there? Oh, uh, you know tofu? Tofu uh, fabric. Would it be, is it possible to, to buy some tofu from the factory there as well? I felt bad about it because everyone was so nice to me. But at this point, the truth felt more important. I will come clean later. Oh yeah, there it is. So I can, I can come inside? I couldn't believe it. Just a week ago, I was watching Andrew's video and now I was actually in one of the factories. However, there are two stages to the process. The first stage is creating the white blocks. The second stage is frying it. And that's where most of the plastic is used. But although there was a strong plastic smell coming from the area, there was no frying happening here. I left the factory without the sample I was looking for. But then someone came back with a batch of freshly fried tofu. Mm. The salty one is really good. Tastes a bit like a um, savory donut, I would say. The normal one, not my favorite, but um, it's okay. Thank you so much. 
So I just came back from the tofu factories. I would say overall it was a very successful day. I got some great footage from uh, inside the factory, so I'm really happy about that. However, when I was driving back, something kind of bugged me. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that this tofu in this container was made with plastic. I mean, I've seen the area, the plastic trash is everywhere. The smell is, is horrible, but I think I want to see it with my own eyes. So I'm going back tomorrow. I really just want to see a factory where they're using the plastic and then get one of those straight from the batch. Here I was, on my way to the Tofu village again. And now that I had seen the area, I felt way more confident than the day before. Surely it would be possible to get my way into a plastic factory today. But that confidence was crushed pretty quickly when I tried to talk my way in again. They all <laughs> not, not allow it. Because uh, recently this area has been a uh, hotspot in a newspaper. You are a journalist or reporter, they are afraid of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understand. It was a weird feeling. On the one hand, I was happy that I was able to get a sample yesterday. But I was also pretty sad that I wasn't going to see the plastic frying with my own eyes. I decided to get lunch in the village and figure out my next move. That's when I noticed black smoke and an even stronger plastic smell than usual. Turns out, there was another tofu factory right next to the restaurant. This was my chance. I know everyone in the village was on high alert. But I would be a bad journalist if I didn't even try to get in. And let's just say I'm very very happy that I did. I left all my camera gear in my bag. It was just going to be my iPhone. I asked if I could look around and there it was. Plastic was being burned right underneath a sizzling pan of tofu. Again, a strange feeling got a hold of me. I was looking at something pretty horrible, but at the same time, it felt like I hit the jackpot. I captured some footage, but more importantly, I bought an entire bag of tofu. Now that I got what I needed, I got the hell out of there. Back to the hotel. Mission accomplished. Today was a uh, long day, but uh, boy, was it a uh, successful day. We have a whole bag of tofu. With this sample, I actually saw the plastic being burned. With this sample, I'm 100% certain that it was fried above a plastic fire. So I will uh, sleep well tonight. One final mission before we uh, head back to Bali tomorrow. We are in the taxi right now. The samples in the bag. Let's hope I can just drop it off because I did try to reach out to the lab. Contact wasn't exactly uh, stellar. Again, we'll uh, we'll just have to go and knock on the door and uh, pray that they uh, that they can drop off the sample. I just came back from the lab. Apparently they're closed today because of some holiday that I wasn't aware of. I'm currently heading back to the hotel. I just checked out. I have to book another night. I have to book a new flight as well. Part of the job, but uh, definitely not the most fun part. We'll, uh, we'll keep our heads up. Tomorrow is another day. I just came back from the laboratory and well, it was a bigger success than yesterday because uh, it was open. Uh, I did drop off the sample. The price was a little heavier than I expected it to be. It's around $700. At least these guys are, are the real deal. Yeah, we're going to be testing it for pretty much every plastic chemical that can be released. Um, Given the circumstances, I'm more than, uh, than willing to pay it. I'm way too invested at this stage. The results are right here on my phone. This is the report they sent me. Um, 
But yeah, of course, I don't know what all these uh, numbers mean. That's why I'm going to hop on a call with the laboratory and uh, yeah, they will tell me more about, uh, about the findings. Before we start, it would be pretty interesting to understand what did we test for and why. Those are potentially dangerous for human beings and they can stay in your system for quite a long time. And what happens if it does get into our bodies? I've looked at the numbers. It is my understanding that there has been... Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record the meeting, but I'll do my best to give an accurate summary. I'll put the results of the tests uh, in the description of the video. Please note that the following is my interpretation. Any of my statements do not reflect the lab's opinion. So the tofu sample was tested for dioxins and PAHS or PAS. Basically, these are highly toxic chemicals that are released when uh, burning waste such as plastic, for example. They can cause cancer, they can disrupt hormones, they can damage the immune system and affect reproduction. These chemicals can stay in your system from 7 to 11 years. So that's a very long time. That's why frequent exposure to these chemicals is especially dangerous. So the lab test revealed that various dioxins and PAHS were found in the tofu. So in other words, the tofu that I tested was indeed contaminated. But thank God the levels that were found were low, below international safety thresholds. Therefore, uh, occasional or one-time consumption doesn't immediately pose a great danger. Someone from the lab said it best, staying within safety thresholds does not equal healthy. So yeah, happy that the levels aren't super high, but definitely not good news. Now it should be a good time to show the results to Andrew because there's also been an update regarding a police crackdown on the tofu factories apparently. What was the general response from, from people on your video? Most people in Indonesia seem incredibly positive about it. Like, I hope most people have the right tone with it. It's a hard thing. Like, I, I mean, I never really wanted it to be, come across as a hit piece. Suddenly, everyone I met there was like incredibly nice and generous with their time. It's one of those awkward things to kind of put out. But at the same time, you know, I, I think that it, it's, it's horrible for them, just like it is probably the worst for that. In other than the, the factories. Really, my goal or my hope from the video was some way, shape or form that it would be helpful for them. You know, that the government would come in with some kind of assistance in planning an alternate fuel supply. I think the one big criticism was that the thing that you filled in was that I didn't test the tofu, you know? Yeah, um, speaking of the test, have you got the chance to, to take a look at what I sent over? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest level of risk is for the is for the people in who live in the villages and the work there. Because, I mean, as other studies have found, like it gets into the ground and then the food supply through like the chickens the cows everything still if you are eating hopeful on a daily basis which many many people do in uh, surabaya then of course the stuff is like horrendous like one of the things that really stuck out to me from uh these findings that you had was you know it says that, that a lot of these dioxins have a half life of seven to eleven years so you've got a decade for this stuff to build up in your system right um it's not like you, you're not like i'm gonna eat one of these things and keel over and die or else this practice would have it killed itself off many years ago, you know? It's far more insidious than that. It's sort of in line with smoking there. You know, you might not ever know why it was caused, but maybe you're getting cancer. Maybe it's somehow passing on to your kids. Something you sent me on on Instagram, and that was the like the, the police crackdown of, of some of these, these factories. So what, what's happening there? Yeah, I don't know either. Someone forwarded it to me. Local store buy and sent this through to me. They are enforcing the existing regulations. I mean, it's all this crash is easy and legal. It's not like they're bringing in new laws. It's just kind of tolerated, right? So they're, they're sort of going in. And unfortunately, I, I tend to think what will happen is that they will move in the short term to other fuels like wood, like coconut, right? To for at least the sort of the primary like the, the soft white tofu. And if everybody in the village is doing it, then no one's at a competitive disadvantage. So I think it's still a net positive. But to me, the harder thing is, is the, um, the deep fried tofu. I mean, you see all of those uh, dry and walks. It's just not cost effective for them to use those with wood. I am skeptical that it, it lasts. 
I, I sort of think that it's maybe the kind of thing that is going to go away for a month or two and then go back to the way it was before. Because these guys are going to need to make a living. There's always going to be a demand for that product. That, that, that's my idea. Anyway. If you've made it this far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because it really helps me out a lot. Special thanks to the Angler Chemical Lab in Surabaya, Andrew, of course, and all the people that helped me in this investigation. In any case, thanks for watching and I really hope to see you in the next video.